currently witnessing the arrival of our chief guest for this evening's proceedings, Honorable Patli Champikar Ranavaka, Minister of Megapolis and Western Development. He is also joined by our keynote speaker for this evening, who is Dr. Ravi Fernando, Chairman and CEO of Global Strategic Corporate Sustainability Private Limited and Executive in Residence for INSEAD Business School, France. They have all been received by the President of IPM Sri Lanka, members of the Council at the steps of the BMI CH, and they are now in the process of ushering them up to the entrance of our hall. An executive in residence, INSEAD Business School, France. May we rise and welcome them amidst us. The chief guest and keynote speaker were received by Mr. Ken Vijay Kumar, Chairman NHRC 2017, and members of the council at the main entrance. Upholding the traditions of Sri Lanka, the Kandyan dancers in their glamorous outfits are now welcoming the Honorable Minister, followed by the distinguished guest. And we welcome our chief guest and our other dignitaries to join us in the traditional lighting of the oil lamp. Ladies and gentlemen, may we invite our dignitaries now to please proceed to the lamp, the traditional lamp, as is customary in this part of the world, we commence any auspicious occasion with divine blessings and that light is testament to ushering in positive energy for our occasion. And so let's start off by inviting our chief guest to do the honors. Indeed, keeping in line with the rich tradition and culture of Sri Lanka and giving light to this event, first and foremost, I would like to invite to light today's oil lamp, the chief guest, Honorable Patli Champikar Ranavaka, Minister of Megapolis and Western Development. He will be followed by our keynote speaker, Dr. Ravi Fernando, Chairman and CEO of Global Strategic Corporate Sustainability Private Limited and Executive in Residence, INSEAD Business School, France. Followed by President, IPM Sri Lanka, Professor Ajanta Dharmasiri. We also have with us the Chairman of the National HR Conference 2017 and Honorary Secretary of IPM, Mr. Ken Vijayakumar. Deputy Chairman, National HR Conference 2017 and Council Member of IPM Sri Lanka, Mr. Priyankara Senivirathna. We will also be joined by the Chairman of the Technical Committee of the NHRC 2017, Mr. Krishantha Obesekara. Followed by immediate past President, IPM Sri Lanka, Mr. Rohita Ambarapala. He will be followed by the Vice President of IPM Sri Lanka, Mr. C. Ganile. Also the Honorary Treasurer, IPM Sri Lanka, Mr. Ajit Bopitia. We will then be joined by Chief Operating Officer, IPM Sri Lanka, Mr. P.G. Tennakon. 
Also Chairperson, National HR Exhibition 2017, Ms. Primrose Mascrinos. We also have with us the co-chair for Great HR Practices, Dr. Jayanta Patiratna. Followed by co-chair Great HR Practices, Mr. Samantha Ratnayaka. We also have now the chairperson of the Great HR Debate, Ms. Shivanti Vijay Surya. Followed by Chairman National HR Excellence Awards 2017, Mr. Anra Pandita Gay. We also have with us Manager Member Services and Corporate Affairs of IPM Sri Lanka and Chief Coordinator of NHRC 2017, Ms. Himali Dasanayaka. Followed by Mr. Mangala Dorinkal, Head of Human Resources, Mobitel Private Limited, representing Official Mobile Communication Partner. We'd also like to be joined by Mr. Sampath Jayasundara, Director, Chief Executive Officer of Senid Business Solutions, who is representing our official technology partner. Followed by Mr. Thessa Khandavala, Manager HR, Widget Newspapers Limited, representing official print media partner. We'd also like to be joined by Mr. Rukmal De Silva, Chief Visionary Officer, 361 Degrees Private Limited, representing our official training and engagement partner. Followed by Mr. Whipul Hetigay, Group Joint Managing Director, Chief Operating Officer, Certis Lanka Group, representing official service partner. And finally, we'd like to also be joined by Mr. Jayanta Amrasingha, Deputy General Manager of HR at Ceylon Bank PLC, representing our official banking partner. Ladies and gentlemen, on this note, we would now like to call on the following dignitaries to grace us at the head table. We start off again with our chief guest. That's right. We have the honor of inviting on stage and take his place on the head table. At the head table, Honorable Partly Champik Ranavaka, Minister of Megapolis and Western Development. We also have our keynote speaker, Dr. Ravi Fernando, Chairman and CEO of Global Strategic Corporate Sustainability Private Limited and Executive in Residence at the INSEAD Business School, France. Followed by President, IPM Sri Lanka, Professor Ajanta Dharmasiri. Also the Chairman of the National HR Conference 2017 and Honorary Secretary of IPM, Mr. Ken Vijay Kumar. Followed by Chairman, Technical Committee, NHRC 2017, Mr. Krushanta Obesekra. Also the immediate past president at IPM Sri Lanka, Mr. Rohita Amrapala. Followed by Vice President, IPM Sri Lanka, Mr. C. Ganile. Also the honorary treasurer of IPM Sri Lanka, Mr. Ajit Bopitya. Chief Operating Officer, IPM Sri Lanka, Mr. P.G. Tenekun. And finally, the chairperson of the National HR Exhibition 2017, Ms. Primrose Mascarenas. Ladies and gentlemen, as we are now joined by our dignitaries on the head table right here on stage, it's now time for us to formally commence the event. We'd like to get started with the national anthem followed by the IPM team song. May we please request the entire gathering to rise for the national anthem followed by the IPM theme song. <laughs> Sri Lanka, Namo 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 Mata. Sunya si bari ni, sunya ni ati
सर्ग अग तेम पत्कर सकल देश यम चय नड नमन अभिमान यकीन इधर यतमयन आई पीएम नम समदा मुरे दिन सुपिपेन सुहादव नीति मिनी सतुकम अगयन व्यवसाय कहीं रजमेन सिरिबिम यूनिम यूनट फिर मुने गिन अद Thank you ladies and gentlemen you may please take your seats now
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the inauguration of the National HR Conference 2017. The National HR Conference is South Asia's largest and most inclusive HR conference. Indeed, and we're very excited to note that this year's conference has attracted some of the world's most renowned resource personnel and representatives from many regional HR bodies, including NIPM India, the Bangladesh Society for Human Resource Management, Pakistan Society for Human Resource Management, as well as Malaysian Society for Human Resource Management, etc. And so with such a diverse and dynamic dynamic representation in our audience. I'm sure we can't wait to kickstart formally with this inauguration program, a two-day learning opportunity in this fantastic forum. Krishma, unlike we welcoming everyone to this two-day conference, there is someone very special amidst our presence today to welcome us. And who is that? Yes, indeed. To formally welcome all of you for giving us the gift of your presence here this evening, we have a special gentleman and it's my privilege to introduce him to the gathering. Professor Ajanta Dharmasiri is a director and the chairman of the Board of Management of the Postgraduate Institute of Management, PIM, University of Sri Jayavardhanapura, Sri Lanka. He also serves as an adjunct professor in International Human Resource Management at the Price College of Business, University of Oklahoma, USA. He is the honorary president of the Institute of Personal Management, which is the largest HR professional body in Sri Lanka. He was recently appointed as a vice president of the Asia Pacific Federation of Human Resource Management. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, to welcome all of you with his official welcome address, please join us in welcoming to the lectern the president of IPM Sri Lanka, Professor Ajanta Dharmasiri. Honorable Patali Champika Ranavaka, Dr. Ravi Fernandu, other distinguished guests at the head table and uh, distinguished invitees in the audience. A very good evening to all of you all. And it's a red letter day in the history of IPM. Having the largest number of participants in a conference and uh, having a wide array of international participants in a conference that is organized by IPM. And with the app theme emerging HR leaders, high tech, and high touch. And we are witnessing the world moving towards four Ds, digitalization, disruption, diverse, and design world of work. So we would deliberate in terms of those ideas tomorrow full day. And we had a very interesting uh, great HR practice presentation this, uh, this morning. And we had a wonderful, uh, lively debate in the afternoon. And now we are moving into recognizing great HR people and great HR practices. So, um, Honorable Minister, we are indeed delighted that you took off uh, time from your busy schedule to be with us. And we know you represent a rare breed of person with brains in the Diyavarnava, where we have lots of uh, muscle power where you complement it with uh, brain power. And I say this with conviction because you were three years elder to me in the university. And I remember one day I visited your room in the engineering uh, hostel. So you did electrical engineering. And I am sure you can add a lot of value with your brain in terms of Sri Lankan development. So we at IPM, we always lament, and I am very frank with you, Honorable Minister, that we need right competencies at key positions. Key positions should not be filled only by connections, but they should be filled by competencies. Rather sad, in some cases, connections have overpowered competencies. So there's a fundamental question mark whether we have the right person doing the right job in the right manner for the right reasons for the benefit of the socio-economic development of the country. So it's food for thought for us to have the competency development even at national level. We need to expand from institutional level to the national level. I'm sure a lot of people in the audience are involved in competency development in their institutional capacity. We need to go beyond in contributing to the capacity development of the country. 
as a nation we need to prosper as a nation we need to be proud about the hidden potential of our people i just came back from my summer teaching in us and i saw lots of sri lankans doing extremely well in different positions in us alone so i have seen such people all around the world can we tap them to come back and we have programs in uh, middle east and when i go there i say you came here to earn and we give you an opportunity to learn and i humbly request you to earn learn and return so that you can come and contribute to the country so we need to have that broad mindset of national human resource development for the benefit of the entire nation so i am very happy that we have a person in a caliber where who is actively involved in such a magnitude in terms of uh, doing such a gigantic thing so may i welcome the presence of dr ravi fernando we were in the same phd program at pim and he decided to quit and now he is truly an international academic he was sharing with me his exposure to vietnam and china being an insiad visiting professor so we are very proud of you dr ravi that you are keeping the sri lankan flag high and he said i am truly deeply very much sri lankan so it's our duty to get you involved in our uh, endeavor so that we would do that so that you would be part and parcel of the development of the country so may i take this opportunity to recognize my council colleagues who work very hard to make this conference a great success and also the dynamic secretariat of ipm and also the international delegates who came from india bangladesh uh, malaysia and pakistan and also all the people who are interested in people development who have gathered here today so let's enjoy let's enrich let's expand and let's excel in the field of people management every one of us have to be a people manager one way or the other so hope this conference with regard to capacity development competency expansion and committed way of doing things would enrich all of you all and i'm sure it will be a memorable experience to all of us so let's enjoy excel and get the best out of the conference and may i wish all of you a good luck and all the very best thank you very much thank you very much professor ajanta dharmasri for that very very sincere warm welcome address on that note ladies and gentlemen let's now take a little glimpse of the host of this entire two day conference the national hr conference 2017 let's take a look at a brief corporate profile video of ipm sri lanka people management people hold the key people who are creative intelligent who work smart and are passionate will take our nation forward this is the world we want to create with you HR professional body in Sri Lanka IPM is the number one choice having won many prestigious awards both locally and internationally IPM beyond academics to take the nation forward in people development IPM hosts the prestigious annual national HR conference IPM research symposium national HR excellence awards the great HR debate the great HR quiz the great hr practices people leaders award hr leaders award and more all these activities are conducted with the objective of developing the hr fraternity of sri lanka who will empower people to take the nation forward ipm business school our programs open doors for both hr and non hr professionals with our nine branches 
1,300 members and 8,500 students. The programs offered range from diplomas, degrees and postgraduate programs for both HR and non-HR professionals as well as corporate workshops and seminars. IPM designs and conducts HR-related and non-related specialized training programs to suit your organization. The IPM Library is regarded as Sri Lanka's largest HR library. It has been identified as one of the most sought-after destinations for learning by the country's HR fraternity. Consultancy Services IPM Sri Lanka, through its consultancy arm, offers a wide spectrum of business solutions to address all areas of the HR discipline in the corporate world. Faculty par excellence. The academic faculty consists of the country's most sought after members of academia and industry experts who are highly qualified and possess years of hands-on experience in their respective field. IPM Council. The executive council of IPM Sri Lanka is driven by industry leaders in HR who govern the institution's strategic activities, ensuring its adaptability and relevance in our ever-changing business environment. IPM Memberships IPM's professional membership is an exclusive status that opens new pathways to connect with the best minds of the ever-evolving global HR platform. What we intend to do Develop and promote the principles of human resource management. Innovate techniques for managing human resources. Encourage research into the growth of human resources for corporate and national development. Influence national policy development to integrate HRM into all public and private sector initiatives. Facilitate networking and knowledge sharing among HR professionals at national and international levels. IPM, a global leader in human resource management, developing globally competitive HR professionals, creating a new breed of achievers. As post-war Sri Lanka has seen a rapid increase in development activity, our island crucially requires a skilled and intelligent workforce to supplement and sustain this development. IPM has thus become a pivotal establishment for people development in our nation's rapid growth phase. Minister of Technology and Research, Sri Lanka, January 2013 to November 2014. Minister of Power and Energy, Sri Lanka, January 2015 to September 2015. He holds a BSc in Engineering, University of Moratua, Sri Lanka, an honors degree with a class specialized in the area of power systems. And today, he is the Minister of Megapolis and Western Development of the Government of Sri Lanka. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together to Minister Patli Chompika Ranavaka to address the gathering. Dr. Ajanta Dharmasiri, our guest speaker today, Dr. Ravi Fernandu, <coughs> members of the head table, members of the IPM, Ladies and gentlemen, the National HR Conference organized and hosted by the Institute of Personal Management Sri Lanka is patently an event distinguished for its tremendous significance as endorsed by the ever-growing popularity it has garnered among the HR professionals in our country at large. I feel much honored and privilege to grace this occasion as the chief guest and to appreciate the inestimable contribution that the IPM is consistently making for the nation's well-being through the enrichment of skills and knowledge of people in the HR discipline. From the perspective of megapolis and Western development, I believe that it is not merely the natural resources of a country, but much more. It is quality and the capacity of its human resources to propel it towards national prosperity and productivity to be competitive in the global arena that matters. I have observed with interest the human service that the Institute is rendering to uplift 
the quality of our human capital in today's context of economic well-being and national competitiveness. Where countries such as ours face an enormous challenge, a nation's competitiveness becomes crucial for survival in the light of technology, influencing the manner in which human capital is able to abreast of the rapid changes that are taking place to challenge the status quo. The Institute of Personal Management has once again dared to be different and have blazed a trail by delving into very timely and exciting topic, emerging HR leaders, high tech and high touch. The digital world of work and workforce diversity are two of most crucial areas that have gripped the attention of all. It is not unusual today to see the trends that have been set in motion through technology and convergent applications where automation and the integration of solution based on IT keep evolving by leaps and bounds. Hence, the modern day human capital is undoubtedly becoming tech savvy and with that goes diversity, be it culture to ethnicity or gender where equality and human dignity are striving to reign supreme. It is no doubt a clarion call for a holistic approach to be mapped out so that we as a nation are geared to meet the emerging challenges in the technological advancement and are supposed to be reckoned with globally. Megapolis and Western development thus becomes an all-embracing endeavor where both the public and the private sector can join hands to make our country progressive and prosperous. The initiative taken to address the emerging challenges through high-tech and high-touch underpin the concept of hearts and minds of the people being passed up for a common goal, be it the public or private sector, and I am pleased to state that towards this objective, the IPM is gallantly bracing itself. As for the megapolis and western development endeavors, I foresee the invaluable contribution that your institution can deliver through skills development, coaching, and monitoring on a wider scale that will be beneficial for us to achieve our objectives. Creating a committed workforce who are conscious of their solemn duty to strive for national prosperity and economic well-being. Ladies and gentlemen, I take this opportunity to wholeheartedly congratulate the Institute of Personal Management for the pioneering efforts made as a na nation's leader in HRM for putting together a conference of this magnitude. Indeed, it is a tribute to all stakeholders for a splendid job done in the true tradition to uphold the stature and prestige of this mega event. Best wishes for a successful National HR Conference 2017 and all your future endeavors. Thank you all. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister. Your presence here is of much value to us. We know that you are packed with a tight schedule, but nevertheless, you made your way through here, and it is of great strength to us. Thank you very much. Yes, and therefore, to present a token of appreciation on behalf of the IPM team, it's now my pleasure to invite Professor Ajanta Dharmasi, President of IPM Sri Lanka, accompanied by Mr. Ken Vijay Kumar, Chairman of NHRC 2017, and Honorary Secretary of IPM Sri Lanka, to please present a token of appreciation to our valued chief guest. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister, as well as Professor Jant Dharmasiri and Mr. Ken Vijay Kumar. Well, coming up next, ladies and gentlemen, is a much-awaited item on the agenda because it's now time for us to pay attention to our keynote speaker. And it is indeed an honor for us to introduce to you a distinguished gentleman who is our keynote speaker here this evening, Dr. Ravi Fernando is an alumni of the University of Cambridge. 
having completed the Climate Leadership Program, a postgraduate certificate in sustainable business, and a Master of Studies in Sustainability Leadership. He holds a Doctor of Business Administration degree from the European University, Switzerland, 2016. He also completed the Advanced Management Program at the INSEAD Business School in France. In September 2007, he won a Global Strategy Leadership Award at the World Strategy Summit for his work on sustainability-led ethical branding in the apparel and tea sectors. He was the founder of the UN Global Compact Sri Lanka Network in 2010 and is a director of the UNGC Sri Lanka Board. He's currently chairman CEO of the Global Strategic Corporate Sustainability Private Limited, which operates in Vietnam, Sri Lanka, and China. He serves on the boards of LOLC Holdings Limited, Habitat for Humanity, Ceylon Asset Management, and Aitken Spence Plantations Limited. In academia, he is a visiting faculty member of the INSEAD International Directors Program and the INSEAD Advanced Management Program. He teaches the subject on strategic corporate sustainability. He's also an executive in residence at the INSEAD Social Innovation Center, and he published a book titled Strategic Corporate Sustainability, Seven Imperatives for Sustainable Business. Ladies and gentlemen, with such a glittering and outstanding set of achievements, it's our honor to introduce to you our keynote speaker for this evening. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together and welcome to the lectern, Dr. Ravi Fernando. Members of the head table, Professor Ajanta, uh, Dharmasiri, and also Ken, and the other members of PIM, honored guests, our visitors from South Asia and Southeast Asia. Ladies and gentlemen, it is indeed a great honor to share a few words with all of you. And I sincerely hope, as probably one of the few non-HR professionals who will be addressing you in the coming days, that I will be able to give you a perspective of how I see the role, the emerging role, of C-suite HR leaders and the kind of role that I envisage being performed. And today, a lot of what I share is also what I teach at the NCR Business School in our International Directors Program. I'm going to talk about three key aspects, and I sincerely hope each of them will resonate with you. The first aspect I'm going to talk about is the HR professional's role as a builder of talent, not just a recruiter of talent, but a builder of talent. Secondly, I want to talk about the role of HR as being an enabler, an enabler in terms of the emerging technologies that are going to make a key difference as we move forward in business. Because HR in itself, if it doesn't sustain the business, then becomes superfluous. We need to also be enablers of some of the emerging uh, technologies. And lastly, I want to talk about a human resource leader being a sensitizer to the entire organization of issues and emerging trends and global challenges, because it's very easy for business leaders to be so engrossed in delivering results for them to miss some of the key changes that are happening and to embrace them and to internalize them. So a builder, an enabler, and a sensitizer. So let me start with the next slide. The Where does this move? OK. So I picked a human resource model uh, by Dave Ulrich developed in 2012, and I'm going to focus on just one quadrant, the change agent quadrant, which basically had a very interesting word that caught my eye, 
and that is the word enablement. And as, as the day progresses, as the presentation progresses, you will understand why enablement is such an important factor in terms of the human resource management side of things. So let me get, move quickly onto the first uh, slide, which is the role of human resource management in terms of building talent, building talent, and also enabling talent, and also building a global mindset into the talent we have. Let me start by talking a little about some of the C-suite leaders that I come across in Sri Lanka. Most times when I talk to CEOs, when I talk to directors of companies, I find them so engrossed in delivering their next month's results or their next quarter's results, and the quality of time that these gentlemen and ladies should be spending in the strategic direction of this company is few and far between. And ladies and gentlemen, the C-suite of a company, they're the talent that should be driving the company's future, not simply running the company today. Now, I think HR has a key role in releasing the energy and the time of these special people who have been hired and who are probably the best paid people in the company to be able to do their job. And why do I say that? What I find in a lot of leadership positions is that most of them are engaged in what I call CFO roles. Now all of you are probably thinking, yeah, 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 he's thinking about chief financial officer. No, I'm not thinking about the chief financial officer. What I find with a lot of the CEOs in Sri Lanka is they are the chief follow-up officers. And that's a very sad situation. If the best paid talent in the company is trying to figure out how to follow up on things, then when does that team get a chance to develop strategy? When does that team get an opportunity to create the future? So I think one of the key roles of any HR person in any company is to ensure its top leadership team are able to think about strategic issues and not be firefighting and trying to deliver, uh, deliver on results which really should be the, uh, uh, the, the, the responsibility of the chief operations people and the operations team. Secondly, the second point under the uh, to topic of builder is building global mindset. Now, why do I talk about global mindset? 70 years since independence, over 97% of everything we export is in commodity form. Why is that? Why is it that we as a nation are yet a commodity exporting nation? Every nation has three leverages which they can use to build strategy. The first leverage is its natural resources. The second leverage is its geographic location. And the third leverage is its human resource. It's when you bring these three things together, a country has a national strategy. And we are engaged at the INSEAD Business School in building strategy, and I was just sharing with our colleagues from Malaysia, I was deeply involved in building Malaysia's 11th Malaysia Plan, 2016-2020, that will take Malaysia to be an advanced nation. Now, why is it that we don't build talent who can take Sri Lanka from a commodity exporting nation to a value-added, significantly value-added, high-tech exporting nation? Do, is it that we don't have the natural resources? No, we do. We have some of the best natural resources on the planet. We are, in fact, the ninth largest titanium resource in, in the world, and we have the most purest graphite in the world. But what have we done with it besides exporting it in gunny bag form? How is HR going to build global exposure to the talent of Sri Lanka? 
And that, I, ladies and gentlemen, should be something that every HR director, every HR person should be seriously engaging time in. And people tell me, yeah, but they travel abroad, abroad quite a bit. They spend time in international markets. If you want to build international mindset, if you want to build global mindset, that's not enough, ladies and gentlemen. These talented young people must be placed in markets, must live in those markets, and must get exposed to those markets, and that's the only way you're going to build global exposure. Otherwise, the most globally exposed Sri Lankans will be all of those ladies and gentlemen who are working at Sri Lankan Airways. They're not, that's not the way to build global talent and global exposure. We must put them in markets and get them to start getting into the real world of business and understanding the realities of operating in an international market. So, in terms of builder, I want to challenge everyone who is in the HR fraternity in Sri Lanka to look at their businesses, if they have potential to be international businesses, how are you going to give those talented people true global exposure, true global presence? Otherwise, another 50 years from now, we will say we are yet a commodity exporting nation. We, are, we have all the natural resources that are required. We have the best location. And if you look at China's Silk Road strategy, we are so brilliantly placed to deliver the East to, the, uh, to Africa and to the Latin Americas. But then we have to be beyond a commodity exporting nation. So the first thought I want to leave with you is, how will you build global exposure and global talent? That, I believe, is what's going to unleash Sri Lanka's true potential. And how can each of you be a builder of that talent in your companies, whatever company you have, how will you build a cadre of truly globally exposed young men and women for the future? Let's move on to the second uh, uh, area that is also quite important these days. And that is how, does, how do companies attract the millennials in terms of making sure that they are engaged with you? Now, one of the key aspects in terms of millennials, some research we did, was that most 65% of millennials want an opportunity to make a difference in their country, in their city, and in, in society. I have yet to see too many advertisements for any position where the company is talking about the purpose they have and how they can be part of that purpose. I have not seen ads like that. But if you want to attract the millennials, then begin to have a clear purpose and have a clear mission in terms of a bigger purpose than simply delivering shareholder profits quarter after quarter. And recently, we did some research with the last two batches of MBAs who passed out of the INSEAD Business School, and I'm proud to be associated with this school, which today is overtook Harvard to be the number one business school in the world. And what did these young people say? They said that they were ready to take a 15 to 20 percent cut in their income if they were in organizations which had the right purpose and where they could easily associate with that purpose and contribute to that purpose. So if we want to build, bring young, brilliant, talented people into our organizations, then we must start having a purpose just simply beyond creating shareholder value. We must look at the future of those companies and the sustainability of those companies. So two, two objectives that I want to leave with you as a builder. Build global talent with global exposure. Number two, have a purpose so that you can attract the millennials. I want to move on to the second topic I was going to talk about, and that is as an enabler. Dave Urich talks about enablement. 
Now, many, many years back, I was a management trainee of Unilever. And this is going to date me, but I yet remember the HR team at Unilever saying, we are going to put the top, I think the 500 to 600 executives of Unilever through computer training. Now that was many, many moons back. Why? Because they wanted everybody to be competent. But there are so many new technologies and new concepts that are coming into being today, and I want to know what is HR doing to make those concepts truly understood and truly embedded in business strategy and in businesses. So I'm going to specifically talk about two. One is in terms of artificial intelligence and how artificial intelligence is beginning to change the game in terms of global strategy development and global performance. 3D printers, Sri Lanka has a big manufacturing base, especially in apparel. How will 3D printers begin to impact those, that sector? And I can tell you, commercial 3D printers are very much in place now. Number three is the area of nanotechnology and how nanotechnology is beginning to have a huge impact in terms of global competitiveness. But I'm going to focus on the issue of artificial intelligence. I came across a very interesting quote recently, and it said, we live in a society exquisitely dependent on science and technology, in which hardly anyone knows anything about science and technology. And that, I thought, was a very profound statement. I'm not in any way pretending to know too much about science and technology, but then it is our role and job to demystify science and technology so that the rest of the organization embraces it and not avoids it because it somehow seems just too far-fetched. And artificial intelligence is one of those things. So which companies are the world's biggest, best companies now? So the four biggest companies are Google, uh, Apple, Google, Amazon, Facebook, and they have replaced the famous oil companies to be the world's leading companies. Every one of them, you can see that second column, have already mobilized artificial intelligence for every one of those companies. There's Amazon Alexa, there's Siri, and there's a whole bunch of mobilized artificial intelligence situations. Today we are talking about self-driven cars. We are talking about an amazing change in terms of global uh, technologies. Now, I did a bit more research on this, and here's what I found. So artificial intelligence, they had 350 of the biggest and best thinkers on this subject put together, and they were asked the question, when will artificial intelligence begin to beat humans in terms of AI contribution? And that's a scary, scary prospect. I remember reading about a year back that uh, Infosys in India let go 6,000 jobs because of artificial intelligence being installed. Now, here's what the research said, that in the next 20 to 30 years, you will see a massive inflection point in terms of artificial intelligence, beginning to help companies synthesize data, big data, big data analytics, so that decision-making becomes that much more profound and that much more knowledge-driven and fact-driven. So, how many companies in Sri Lanka are today beginning to see the amazing changes and the need for embedding artificial intelligence and mobilizing artificial intelligence in their companies? And I think we have to embrace this, otherwise we will be left behind once again in terms of a massive change in terms of decision making and making strategic decisions in the future. The third and final area I want to spend a few minutes with you on is the topic of strategic competitiveness. And I'm not talking about strategic competitiveness 
just in Sri Lanka. I'm talking of strategic competitiveness in the region. I'm talking of strategic competitiveness on a global scale. Every company who wants to manage and be strategically competitive needs to do two things. They must manage strategic risks and they must seize strategic opportunities. They must manage strategic risks and they must seize strategic opportunities. Now, so what has HR got to do with this? I believe that HR has a key role to play in sensitizing the organization to the potential risks and also sensitizing the organization to potential opportunities. Because if the company is so focused and driven in terms of monthly results, quarterly results, they might miss out both these opportunities and the risks. So let me talk a little about one of the areas that I have specialized in and I teach is the subject of strategic corporate sustainability. And I in, was interestingly, I found the role of HR in corporate sustainability is some research done by Lola and Moran in 2014. And according to them, HR must be actively involved in human resource, uh, in supporting sustainability. It should play a key role or it should be a leader so 86% of the time of the, 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 the sample that was researched said that HR must be engaged in sustainability. Now, the question I have is, so has your organization been sensitized to the challenges climate change will bring to supply chains? Have you begun to sensitize your organization to that? And whether you and I like it or not, we are, we, the last three years have been the hottest three years on the planet, and this year is going to be hotter than the year before. Global water stress is at its highest peak, and you can see India is poised to have a 75% of the country with water stress. But that is not what I'm talking about today. I'm talking about the supply chains of the companies you work in. I was told last year, when the extreme weather conditions happened in Sri Lanka, there were three or four companies which were completely uh, hamstrung. One of them was the Coca-Cola company, and there was also the anchor, the, the Fonterra company, and also the, uh, the guys making the, uh, the uh, Ceylon Brewery. Now, I can tell you, that year in, year out, the world is going to ex have extreme weather conditions which will disrupt supply chains. And most of the supply chains in the world are being disrupted even as we speak at every stage, from production to packing to logistics to processing. Now, whenever there's a crisis like this, it's HR who comes in to try and sort things out, relocate people, relocate the plants. But I'm saying you have to be proactively involved in these things, not reactively involved in these things. In fact, I was talking to some of the people in one of the companies, and they told me last year we had six feet of water in the factory. This year we have four feet of water in the factory. But if you had six feet of water last year, what if you did a couple of things to ensure there's no water in the factory this year? And we know that these extreme weather conditions are going to keep happening. So instead of being reactive to these issues, I think HR can take a proactive stance by, number one, sensitizing the company to the huge challenges of climate change. And I was doing some interesting research in terms of Sri Lanka's rainfall. And the reason I'm talking about rainfall is we have yet a reasonably big agriculture and plantation industry. So in 2015, Sri Lanka had, in the upcountry region, where we have many of our plantations, 197 days of rain. 
In 2016, this figure is down to 157 days of rain. That's 40 days less rain. What plantation can succeed if in another few years we are going to have a massive problem with rainfall? The reason I'm talking about this very key issue is I believe that just like the HR department of Unilever got all of us focused and understanding the real issues and how to use some of these new technologies. How many of the companies represented here have sensitized their entire management team, the top level team, and the rest of the company to the impending challenges and risks that climate change are going to bring about in Sri Lanka? Whether it is rainfall, whether it is drought, whether it is um, uh, extreme temperatures, every one of these things are going to have an impact in your supply chains. And how many of you have taken the trouble to sensitize your organization to this subject? And I believe it is your job to sensitize the rest of the company to the impending challenges that sustainability is going to pose. But not only challenges, there are also opportunities. And I can tell you, my favorite company now is a company led by a young South African called Elon Musk, who has turned all these challenges of climate change driven by the burning of fossil fuels as an opportunity to create electric vehicles. Who is looking at massive deployment of solar energy and his gigafactories in Nevada 24 million square feet are entirely powered by solar power. Not only Tesla, Apple, Google, and Amazon have deployed solar energy for all their key plants now and are driven by solar energy. So all these issues are also opportunities. And I think we have to be sensitizing companies to also managing the risks but also seizing the opportunities. And I believe that there are so many opportunities to be had. If only we begin to get sensitive to some of the changes that sustainability bring, both in terms of risks, but also in terms of opportunities. Sri Lanka has always been blessed with excellent water management in the past, thanks to King's like Parakramabahu, who actually had the rainwater harvesting system. And today, Sri Lanka yet collects about 29% of the rainfall that falls on its land, but 71% of it is let go. If, a, if the planet is going to have a massive water crisis in the next four to five years, with massive decline in freshwater resources, Shouldn't we begin to look at that 71% of water that we waste and begin to have strategies to rainwater harvest? I believe sustainability brings challenges, but it also brings opportunities. Recently, I was working with the L'Oreal team in France and also the Renault team, and we were discussing supply chain strategy in China and supply chain strategy in India. And I asked them to pinpoint on the map of China and on the map of India their number one and two plants that are producing majority of their products. And, as, and, and you know, ladies, if you're a L'Oreal user, every one of those products need lots of water. And guess what we found? Their top four plants were all in water-stressed areas which were going to be bigger physical water shortage issues. Now, that's a business issue. A business issue is something HR should be involved in. I believe that every HR manager is an expert on talent development and unleashing talent, but should be also a business manager. And if you really want to play a role in your company's future, then 
be a builder of global mindset talent. Be an enabler of the technologies that are going to change the game and impact human resources. Artificial intelligence is going to impact human resources. And third, clearly be a sensitizer to, of the entire company's management and its leadership team of the issues that are going to create risks for that company. Don't wait till they all discover these issues. We should, the HR teams must be the ones who sensitize the company's leadership to these issues. And I was quite surprised that the supply chain team hadn't realized that five to six years from there, now the very places where they're having their plants are the very places which are going to be without water. And they had to then relook at their supply chain strategy. I believe HR has a huge role to play in the survival and sustainability of your time, of the company. Let's give talent wings and ensure organizations are relevant. Thank you for your time and all the best in the conference. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure you agree with us when we say that was an insightful, knowledge-filled keynote speech, and I'm sure our audience has had much value to take away home from that address. Ladies and gentlemen, let's now appreciate our keynote speaker, Dr. Ravi Fernando. And to do so, I have the honor of inviting on stage Mr. Rohit Yamrapala, immediate past president, IPM Sri Lanka, to give away the token of appreciation to our keynote speaker today. Thank you very much, Dr. Ravi Fernando, and thank you, Mr. Rohita Amrapala. HR is no more functional. It's transformational. It was operation centered on the physical supervision of HR management. But the world is changing, steered by technological advancements, hence the need for a more evolved human resources strategy to keep pace. That's why we made it our mission to deliver an HR solution that's equipped to contend with the ever-changing nature of business demands, nourished by two decades worth of insights, experience and expertise. Our latest self-service HR is a bold, outcome-driven solution that accelerates all HR functions, streamlining it to one expansive and integrated platform. Amongst the key operational functions we have on offer, driving effective human resource management are leave and approvals, allowing one-click leave application plus leave dashboard analytics to identify absentees and patterns impacting company due to unplanned leave. ELC timeline, a recap of an employee's growth within the organization. Performance, an intelligent tool ensuring strategy and goal alignment of workforce with ongoing evaluation and recognition of top talent. Analytics, keeping top management just a click away from a real-time view of personalized information and knowledge derived of operational data linked to decision-making. Mobile app, enabling employees to access and manage their information from anywhere at any time. Kiosk, offering employees the means to access and manage their information through a multilingual kiosk terminal. At our core, we support multi-country requirements, flexible in organizational management, configurable in unique process requirements, intuitively self-reliant on any device. Digital HR is no longer taking a backseat as technology is woven into nearly every aspect of the organizational sphere and with over two decades of experience in the software industry, having empowered a workforce totaling two million in over a thousand organizations, we are at the zenith of our capabilities to deliver your organization a transformational and effective HR. Our presence in over 30 countries covering 18 industries around the globe is a testament of this fact. It is also our understanding that emotional intelligence, machine learning, predictive analytics, robotics and geofencing will radically change the landscape of HR in time to come. And Zenit is geared to navigate your company through the unpredictable seas of the future via cutting-edge solution-based technology and a focus on the vision of connecting minds.
Ladies and gentlemen, if you came into this conference hall thinking that HR professionals are here to just manage and lead people, then you could be mistaken because if the next act is anything to go by, HR personnel are also here to entertain people. Our next item will be an entertainment performance by a group of talented IPM students and we at IPM Sri Lanka believe in promoting their multifaceted personalities, be it singing, dancing or just plain performing. Very rightly mentioned, uh, Trishma, not just managing and leading, but also entertaining people. So you are going to get yourselves entertained in just a few minutes. Well, talking about this act, it will be performed by IPM Claim to Fame winners, organized by Young Members Forum of IPM. And this item is choreographed by Mrs. Visaka Jayavira, and music is directed by Mr. Pavara Navaminna. Well, it looks like our performers and IPM students are all set to entertain and engage you with their award-winning performance. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's encourage them and give them a huge round of applause as we present to you the students of IPM Sri Lanka.
Rishma, I just couldn't hold myself back because I really enjoyed the music which they just performed and I just wanted to get on my feet and start dancing a little bit. Did you feel the same ladies and gentlemen? Yes. So then can right. we put it up once again for that beautiful and very exciting talent. Thank you very much.
Well, as you're already aware, our theme for this entire conference is Emerging HR Leaders, High Tech and High Touch. And after looking at the performance by our Emerging HR Leaders, students of IPM Sri Lanka, I think we can add one more aspect to that theme and say that our Emerging HR Leaders are also high talent. So with that very energetic performance by our students at IPM Sri Lanka, it's now time to move on with the rest of the agenda. That's right. It's now time for us to present the first set of tokens of appreciation for our sponsors this evening. And to present the awards of recognition and appreciation, I would like to invite Mr. Ken Vijay Kumar, Chairman NHRC 2017, and Honorary Secretary of IPM Sri Lanka, accompanied by Mr. P.G. Thenakun, Chief Operating Officer, IPM Sri Lanka, to give away the first set of tokens of appreciation to the sponsors. Yes, indeed. And as our presentation party makes its way, we'll have to mention right here at the very outset before appreciating our sponsors that an event of this nature would not have been possible if it weren't for the resources, the support, and the absolute generosity provided by us, by our partners and our sponsors in various capacities. And we would like to appreciate appreciate them and offer them our heartfelt gratitude. So let's get started with the first of our sponsors here. We'd now like to recognize Mobitel Private Limited in recognition of their contribution as our official mobile communication partner. And to receive this award, on, this, to receive this token on behalf of Mobitel, may we invite on stage Head of Human Resources for Mobitel Private Limited, Mr. Mangala Durvinka. This is Mo Mobitel Private Limited, ladies and gentlemen, our official mobile communication partner. Next, put your hands together for Zenit Business Solutions Private Limited in recognition of its contribution as official technology partner, Mr. Sampa Jaisindara, Director, Chief Executive Officer, Zenit Business Solutions Private Limited will receive a token of appreciation. Ladies and gentlemen, Senate Business Solutions, our official technology partner for the conference. We move on next to our official print media partner, which is Vijaya Newspapers Limited. And in order to receive this token of appreciation, we'd like to call forward Manager HR of Vijaya Newspapers Limited, Mr. Tissa Kahamdavala. I believe he's not with us in the audience, so we will move on to our next sponsor. The next token of appreciation will be given out for 361 Degrees Private Limited in recognition of its contribution as official training and engagement partner. Mr. Rukmal De Silva, Chief Visionary Officer, 361 Degrees Private Limited, will get on stage to receive his token of appreciation. This is our official training and engagement partner, ladies and gentlemen, 361 Degrees Private Limited. And the token is received by the Chief Visionary Officer, Mr. Rukmal De Silva. At this point, may we thank Mr. Ken Vijayakumar for giving away these tokens. And meanwhile, request Mr. P.G. Tenakon to stay on stage while being in, joined by Mr. Chandrasiri Ganile, Vice President of IPM Sri Lanka, as we give away the second token, second set of tokens of appreciations to our sponsors. Moving on with the presentation of tokens of appreciation this evening, Sri Lanka Group, in recognition of its contribution as official service partner, Mr. Bipul Hetige, Group Joint Managing Director, Chief Operating Officer, Sri Lanka Group, will be appreciated for his services. This is our official service partner, ladies and gentlemen, Certis Lanka Group. And on stage, we right now have our group joint managing director, chief operating officer, Mr. Vipul Hettige. Thank you very much, sir. We move on next to our official banking partner, Ceylon Bank PLC. And to receive this token of appreciation, may we invite on stage Deputy General Manager of HR, Ceylon Bank PLC, Mr. Jayanta Amrasinghe.
Next, Hamas Hospitals, in recognition of its contribution as official healthcare partner, Mr. Nishant Jayamana, General Manager, Marketing, Hospitals and Laboratory Chain, Hamas Hospitals, will be appreciated for their services rendered. Here we have our official healthcare partner, ladies and gentlemen, Hamas Hospital. Let's appreciate their contribution to our wonderful conference. <laughs> Up next, we'd like to recognize our official food and beverage partner, Malabon Biscuit Manufacturers Private Limited. And to re receive this token on behalf of the company, may we invite on stage the group HR and admin manager of Malabon Biscuits Manufacturers Private Limited, Mr. W. Rohana Vijay Surya. Thank you very much, Mr. Chandra Sri, Vice President, IPM Sri Lanka, for assisting us with the distribution. I would like to request Mr. P.J. Tenekon, Chief Operating Officer, IPM Sri Lanka, to remain on stage and thereby invite Mr. Ajit Bobitia, Honorary Treasurer, IPM Sri Lanka, to give away the third set of tokens of appreciation for our sponsors. Coming up in our third set of recognitions, we'd now like to recognize contribution of our official hospitality partner, and this is Taj Samudra Colombo. In order to receive this token of appreciation, let's invite on stage the area director, Mr. Sarabjit Singh, as well as Mr. Jayanta Tilakaratna, general manager, director of HR at Taj Samudra Colombo. Ladies and gentlemen, this is our official hospitality partner. Let's give it up for Tad Samudra Colombo. As we move on appreciating our sponsors for this gala event, next, MTV Channels Private Limited, YesFM, in recognition of its contribution as official TV media partner and official radio media partner. We'd like to invite on stage Ms. Chetana Lienage, Director, Talent Management, to receive her token of appreciation on behalf of her services rendered. This is our official radio as well as official TV media partner, ladies and gentlemen. We have MTV Channels Private Limited and YesFM. Moving on, we now recognize our official printing partner, and this is Sharp Prince Holdings. To receive a token of appreciation, may we invite on stage Chairman, Chief Executive Officer of Sharp Print Holdings, Mr. Ranjit Fernando. This is our official printing partner, ladies and gentlemen, Sharp Print Holdings. Next, we would like to invite on stage our official job listing partner, Emerging Media Private Limited, Mr. Sanjeeva Raja Paksa, the Managing Director, Emerging Media Private Limited. This is our official job listing partner, ladies and gentlemen, Emerging Media Private Limited, and we have on stage the Managing Director, Mr. Sanjeeva Rajapaksa. We move on next to our official clothing partner, and we have her media designers and tailors to thank. To receive a token of appreciation, may we have on stage Head of Business Development of her media designers, Mr. Amir Hamza.
I believe he's not here with us in the audience, and so we will move on. Let's thank our presentation party for giving away the tokens of appreciation. Thank you very much, Mr. Ajit Bopitya and Mr. Tenakorn. There's never a dull moment on Sundays for families who spend time with the Sunday Times, Sri Lanka's favorite English family weekly, with unbiased news, expert financial reviews, top flight career openings, and informative entertaining features for all ages. Reserve your Sundays for the Sunday Times. From our very first day in 2001, our journey has been one of continuous, consistent, and self-propelled reinvention. We defied convention. We defied the odds. We challenged boundaries. We changed with each step of our broadening dreams, not allowing our business model or brand position to hold us back. Our imagined limitations did not frame us. Our passion to experiment and our intellectual curiosity has kept us ahead of the market for over a decade, making us the largest training service provider in Sri Lanka. We pride ourselves on being the go-to people for HR and training managers who are looking for new and exciting ways to help their employees unite, perform or celebrate. The journey will continue, innovating, driving momentum and breaking boundaries every step of the way, adding value to our stakeholders. 